ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. It's a Monday. That means we're at the Union Pub and Grill, 1125 4th Avenue in Huntington. Welcome in. We are that much closer to football season because today Doc Holliday gave the State of the Union address. What about 16 minutes? I've broken it down. We are not going to hear all 16 minutes. Uh, I'm sure you were on pins and needles for that, weren't you? That was good stuff. <laughs> Dave Walsh with yeah. us, former herd quarterback himself here at the Union. And we are here because, of course, it's Monday. That means the Monday special, dollar fifty bottles, $2 call shots all day, all night. Best service in town. Yep. Taylor takes great care of us every single week we are here. You can't get it any better. It's the Union Pub and Grill. I know this place is going to be jam-packed on Saturdays. Yes, it after will. High school yes, and it will. High school games on Friday. I'm right. sure some will come out. Yeah. But on Saturdays, Saturday. it's going to be jam packed. I mean, Marshall's got games every weekend. Plus, yep. they're on networks that even I can find now. So, can you find ESPN Plus? Uh, it takes the time, but I can't. Okay, you can find some it. of the ones that are on. Like, no, I was just like, thank God you're you and I are doing it because <laughs> Steve because if it comes to visual, I ain't happening. But it's here. I mean, Paulie, it's here. What would we do without Steve Cotton? I don't know. I do not know. I was over here a little bit. He was talking to some of the guys up in the press box earlier today, and uh, you know, he was talking about all the research he's doing. Steve has been working in the off season. He's been updating record books, doing a fantastic job of getting uh, every single game find its record of it in football. Uh, I know that uh, he is a type of guy that loves to have accurate stats, and so I was just you know listening a little bit of his conversation. And, you know, he was talking about you know what he was doing. Someone asked him what he's doing in, in the off season. What he's doing in the summer and updating records. So I can't wait to eventually see all that stuff because uh, he's really taken the ball and yeah. run with it as far as being a uh, a Marshall historian. Exactly, that stuff's important. We need to know how many touchdown throws that Dave Walsh had. That doesn't take long. <laughs> How many did but you yeah, have? Like, for a while there, the record book thing was like the way they were playing. It was like every year I felt so sorry for Jason the game because there's a lot of stuff to update. Yeah. And then it kind of hit a lull. But I got a funny feeling right about now some things are going to change again. And uh, Steve and Jason will uh, be kept very busy. Yes, sir. You guys are going to be busy for sure. So we'll hear from Doc Holliday in a little bit. I've got uh, several sit bites from Doc. And we will talk about his thoughts as the season is almost upon us. Summer's over as far as Doc Holliday is concerned. Uh, the good news, everybody starts zero and zero. So we all are in a good mood right now because Marshall has not yet lost a game. Marshall's undefeated yes. right now. The Thundering Herd undefeated and the season is so young and almost upon us here. I'm excited, so we'll get the doc here in a few minutes, hear his thoughts, and uh, we'll get your phone calls in later on, 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255 to come down and hang out with us today here at the Union Pub and Grill, where the all-day, all-night special yeah. is the dollar fifty bottle and $2 call shot. So Doc was optimistic, and, of course, uh, basketball's been getting ready for uh, their yeah. trip, so they're getting some extra time. It's funny, basketball's getting more time <laughs> to practice, and football, not so much. Yeah, that's amazing. And Doc and will talk about that later. We're talking like, wait, this is August, and basketball practice? Football guys are not are on their way, but it's like something's not right here, but they're going to the Bahamas. For a few days so uh business trip i'm sure danny will tell us coach speak it's all business and very little pleasure but 24 hours in a day they'll find some way to kill some time it's a business trip yeah yes. but come on it's a heck of a business trip <laughs> yes unfortunately we are we're not included on no the we didn't get trip. on the flight for some reason we i don't know it. i don't know we did something wrong but hey danny's doing everything he can to get him ready i told you last week when you i was nice to be back getting reacclimated to the Microphone. Talking radio. As I Talking told you football. the other day, I said, Paul, there's so, that day with Kentucky down on uh, a couple weeks ago, Bluegrass, there's just something about the spoken word. Those guys were awesome. Great show. And now, I mean, the drive is just five to six, turn it on us. I mean, you're the man. You're the man. I've got not, the re- I am not paid to say that. I just enjoy it. I've got that recorded, by the way, you saying okay. I'm the man. That's going to be my new People ringtone. Like button. <laughs> My new ringtone over yeah, here. Right. Dave Walsh calls me. You the man. Okay. That's Dave. It must be showtime. <laughs> Definitely is showtime. Uh, you heard. I wasn't sure I was going to have a show on Friday. You all heard. You were tuned in. You heard that uh, it was uh, it was pins and needles here to make sure I could even get back yeah. to the station here. Um, the good news is I am mobile again. Yeah. 
my long national nightmare is over. <laughs> the day of Friday, which will go down in infamy. infamy <laughs> two car batteries dying in one day in the span of hours. The good news is, said, man. hey, the good news is the one car it was under warranty. There you go. Then, yeah, my uh, my rig. 2014 battery, so yeah. not on warranty. Had to shell out some cash there. And you found out batteries aren't cheap anymore. Batteries are not cheap anymore. They are a little expensive. So the good news is I have charged up battery to go <laughs> whatever vehicle I'm going to use for the football season. All right. You're I'm ready. all set. So I will be there on game days on Saturday <laughs> on the stage yeah. ready to serve you. Yeah. and Or over here when on the road, right? We're going back over there again. I believe that's the. Uh, I believe plan. that's the game plan. Yeah. I believe Roosters you know, the is the first be... one. We have to relive the Miami boys all over again. We're going to be there because that game's going to be on ESPN Plus, and I'm sure a lot of people haven't figured that out yet. Yeah, but they'll be watching, and I'd be, I'd be interested to see how many people go. I know it's the holiday weekend, maybe, but still, it's the old days of the Mac and everything. It's not that far. But it's a one buggy town almost. They that's have true. What? It's a one road in, one road out. Yeah, I know that. I don't know if that's enjoyable to go through all that just to go see Marshall football in oxford right because that's not a football town the way it used to be no it's a hockey town right it's a minor league uh feeder system because they have some of the best college hockey players there since big ben left town it's kind of it's gone downhill a little bit it's not a basketball school anymore either but i just know it's like you mentioned uh, you got a two-lane road in and that same road out and if there's any kind of traffic you're going to be there a while how about the fact that ohio is picked to win the mac finally and they might make it happen. They look like to be the heir apparent to the championship. I saw that. They were picked, uh, you know. Pick Frank, first. Frank, Frank, you got to give the guy credit. Was he's in his 70s like Dan? Is he really? I think. He doesn't if look you it. do the bio and do the time yeah. in Nebraska and here and Athens, and you think, but he gets the players to, to in his system. The lifestyle must be good for him. He could probably go another 10 years. The well, lifestyle lose, must be good. I think he's, what, 4-1 and one against Marshall? He's Three doing and okay. 4-1, and one, and the one he lost was overtime when he decided to not roll the dice. He played a little different. And, no, he rolled the dice instead of kicking, and they like beating overtime. Or didn't lost it because he didn't make the two-pointer. But Bobcats are on the schedule next year. Yes. I'm looking forward Bring to that. Bring back the bell. Bell time. Yes, the, the bell needs to come back to Huntington. They should play every year. I'm sorry. I disagree a little okay. bit. Okay. Okay, let's and keep going. Because the fact that, and I had Rob Cornelius on, and he made a good point, he and, and he, 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 he brought me to his side of thinking here, is that it's a good series. It should happen, but let's not play it every year just because when they do play, it means something. Yeah. I don't think that if they were playing every year, it would mean as much in football yeah. uh, the way it does in basketball. Right. I think it should happen in basketball every year. I think Marshall should play Morehead right. State in basketball every year. I think you can get away more right. with that yearly thing in I basketball. Agree. With football, though, it's great that Marshall's playing Miami, and then Marshall's going to play Ohio, and then Marshall will play somebody else. It's I think the non-conference, you don't want to lock in. And I know I'm making the argument for another school here, but you don't want to lock in. No. You want to have some flexibility here. And so I'm hoping eventually Marshall will have the one football team in the Conference USA. So that's the rival. Right. It's going to hard, though, because right now, Eastern Kentucky and Middle, those are – they're paired together right. more. Probably more of a rival with Southern Miss, I think. And on the other side, you got to have that. Yeah, there's something about the Southern Miss people like going down there, and they like coming up here. I take UAB. Yeah, now they're back. They're picked sure. to do very well again. I know they're they're a testy bunch out here. You think two years ago they're ready to give it? They had given it up, and here they are back. I know they made some cuts because of some financial matters, but still, two years ago they had no football. Now they're gonna, and they're doing very well. Very well. Doc Holliday, press conference earlier this afternoon. We're going to hear from him. I've got uh, some select sound bites from that. We'll get your phone calls in. And don't forget, come down today to the Union Pub and Grill. Why do you want to come down to the Union Pub and Grill? Well, you don't need a reason. It's just the place to come. But if you do need a reason, $1.50 bottles and $2 call shots all day and all night. Best service in town. You can't get any better. Taylor is taking great care of you if you come down today to the Union Pub and Grill. Doc Holliday, when we continue, this is The Drive on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. You're listening to The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. We're here on the Monday edition at the Union Pub and Grill. Welcome back. It's The Drive, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. So earlier today, it was like a high school reunion. Dave Walsh skipped out, though. 
Where were you? You skipped out on high school reunion day. It was like everybody we know. Well, I'll make the next one. I apologize. Okay. Bill uh, Cornwell was there. Chuck Landon was there yeah. sporting some Cleveland Browns gear. <laughs> Grant Trailer was there, yeah. you know, both covering for the Herald yeah. Dispatch. No Doug, though, right? Uh, no Doug, unfortunately. That that felt bad. It's still hard to figure it out, but that's. I didn't know what to do for a little while. I was sitting there thinking, where's Doug? And you're going, like, any questions? And you're going, where's Doug? Yeah. And when Doc usually would say, any more questions? Because he's trying to get up and get out of there. Yeah. Doug would put him back in his chair because he would have a follow-up. Yeah, and another one. I and missed another. that. Yeah. But today was kind of hard, but yeah. uh, some good stuff today from uh, the Doc Holiday uh, presser. That means summer is over for a lot of people, and it's time to get to work and get ready for some football. And here's um, here's what Doc Holiday said. He's excited, and here's his opening statement there earlier this afternoon. Well, I guess, uh, I don't guess, whenever you get to this point, we have that opening press conference. It's upon us now. Like summer's over, and time to get back to work but we're excited i know i'm excited as a as a, as a head coach our staff's really excited our players are excited uh, they've got to go home for a couple of days now they left on friday and they'll report back here on thursday uh we'll actually start practice friday and then of course sunday there's going to be a fan day a media day where the fans will get a chance to meet the new players and uh and spend some time with them so like i say i'm going on the ninth hard to believe it's going on the ninth season but i'm more excited now than i've ever been i like our team I like where we are at this point and uh challenging schedule and everything we have to look forward to. We've got to get to work as quick as we can. The format of the practices and number of days has changed a little bit. So, you know, we got to adjust accordingly. This time last year, we were already practicing. Uh, we lost five practices, not just us, but everybody did. Of course, lost uh, lost uh, five practices in about four or five days. So, you know, we got some catching up to do and uh, you know, we're anxious to get started days those extra practices everybody's going through the same situation so is it that important for a football team or is that just coaches wanting to have more time with the kids just to want more time you know I, I think it's some more time each day it's one as he will tell you that's another day to get better and correct mistakes so I'm sure any any time lost he's going to be concerned but if it's the same for everybody then you know it's who makes the most of it when they're on the field and he mentioned later in the week they'll be here and they're ready to rock so, Doc, uh, he talked a little quarterback. Uh, you've got um, you've got a new guy coming in. He wasn't in for um, nope. for s- spring, summer, whatever you want to call that. And so there's a, there's a, a situation where you've got a new kid coming in, and he's trying to get acclimated. And here's Doc's thoughts on that. Well, you know, I saw I saw uh, I saw a guy come in and, and go to work extremely hard, which is what I think is a transfer student, especially at the quarterback position. You got to earn the respect of your teammates and. Uh, I saw a guy come in and not say a whole lot and just go to work and, and try to work to work as harder harder than the rest of his teammates. Uh, I thought he handled the actual conditioning and skill development part of it extremely well, probably better than I ever thought he would. But you know, until we can get out there and you know we can't have a ball in the summertime, so playing playing without a ball is a little difficult. So you know, we get out there on Friday and got a ball in his hand and, uh, and see what he can do. We're excited to, uh, and looking forward to that. But you know, Isaiah. And Garrett have also had tremendous summers, so it'll be a great challenge. What you hope happens, you know, it's been my experience over a number of years, is, is you hope somebody separates uh, pretty soon, especially with the number of days we have. Uh, you know, you like to see somebody separate. Sometimes when you think you've got two or three, you don't have any. So you hope that one of those guys uh, separate early and we can get settled in there and, and go get ready to go play. Is that true, Dave? You're yeah. a quarterback. Is that true if you have um, a, a wealth of quarterbacks, do you really have a quarterback? I don't think it's that bad, but how many times when they rotate or have two quarterbacks, you've heard the slogan, that means, the slogan means they have none. I know Garrett and uh, Isaiah were here in the spring. Our new our transfer was getting his feet wet, learning the program, learning the scheme, the systems, and that sort. He'll be very well under the microscope come Friday when he starts practicing. Doc's talking about getting that ball in his hand. People here have read everything, heard everything. They want to see if he's the real deal. So he knows – it's on him because we mentioned last week, Paulie, last year were so many question marks, but Chase was here. This year, it's everybody's back, but who's going to be the quarterback? Who's going to be the guy running the offense, running the engine, putting the foot on the gas, so to speak? It's safe to say, then, he's not the heir apparent just because he's uh, got the most potential. He's still got to go out there he's because win it. there are some other guys that think maybe they got a legitimate shot at this thing. Yeah, I mean, Garrett and Isaiah are not going to forfeit it to him. They're going to battle. And – you know, I, I'm sure they're planning a graduate transfer to come in here and play, which should happen. At the same time, though, if something were to happen to him, Garrett and Isaiah, it's it's not as big a drop-off as it was in the past. Sometimes, like, you're going, who's backup? We don't know. 
Now those two guys are ready, and you're only one play away, Paulie. As everybody says, you're only one snap away from being the next guy in, so next you, guy up. So you've got a quarterback who's coming in, so Alex Thompson coming in, and right. you've got a situation where he didn't get to have reps with uh, with his teammates, so he's right. coming in. He's sort of the outlier here to a degree. Yeah. He's yeah. coming in a new guy. He doesn't yeah. have a rapport with people just yet. I mean, sure, he's talked to people, right. but he hasn't been in a situation where you've bonded through hard work together right. and become a unit so doc was asked how's this guy coming in how, you know how's he fitting in with the team and here's doc's reply yeah i think just get you know just you know just to gain respect to your teammates by the way you go about your business the way you live your life the way you go to work and you know he did that i mean he came in and you know he's a he's a tremendous student you know finance graduate and uh had had a you know graduate class this summer he got an a in a class of course and he just but he just came from day one and, and this this was this was the most difficult summer we've ever had as a team, and as far as the work that we put in, and uh, and he just uh, you know there's some different things that our strength coaches did throughout the summer that a lot of guys didn't make it through the workouts and had to come back and repeat them the next day, and uh, he never had that you know he was not one guy that ever uh, had to make up anything. He always did it right the first time, and uh, so I thought that was important that he handled the, the workload that we gave him, and of course where he came from they didn't have the workload that he's got here so i thought he adapted and handled it really well so get in there and get the work that's, that's right. basically going to be the solution for everything i think that's what he knows he has to do he's just not going to come in here and they're going to forfeit to it and hand it to him everybody's watching and he knows he's got to deliver and uh, you know right now i'm sure they're working out and throwing with this receivers to be that will be seen come friday but it's not the same as when Friday gets here and you start out there with a visible person on the other side, and then, for, believe it or not, four weeks from Saturday, they'll be in Oxford. That's hard to believe. Four weeks from Saturday, yep. Oxford. It's uh, coming closer than you think. So uh, get through August, and then you're ready to play some football. Now, what has been one of the biggest storylines over the offseason for Marshall? Is it the loss of Chase Litton? Is it the loss – of some coaches, coaches moving on, coaches moving up, new coaches coming in, the fact that Marshall has a lot of depth. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of really moving parts here, trying to put this puzzle back together. What's this thing going to look like? So the question was asked to Doc, you know, is it going to be continuity with this squad, or are you starting over with the way this thing has been built on the offseason, the pieces that you have with the new guys, the people who have been there, the depth, the experience. So what do you do? You, you start over. Is it like starting over? Do you have that continuity there? Here's what Doc had to say. Well, I think defensively there's a lot of continuity because Adam, you know, we've had Adam was here five years under Chuck, and I mentioned before when I hired Adam, I hired him knowing that I'd lose Chuck someday, so the transition would be easy there. And what also has made that easy is we just have so many starters back. You know, we got so many players back that have played, and, and I think we got some good players back, so that's helped the transition on defense. I think offensively, I thought Tim did a great job of of, uh, of just uh, adapting uh, our terminology to his offense. You know what he wanted to do. We didn't go in and totally uh, wholesale the whole offense as far as terminology is concerned. So the formations are basically we're calling the same and that type of thing. But he just adapted his offense to our terminology, and I thought that helped. But also having the entire offensive line back, all the receivers, the running backs, everything in place, that that helps that transition as well. So basically, when he calls Captain Crunch, he's really calling Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> yeah, that's what you're telling me is the terminology. Yeah, because I mean, you know a year ago there was so much undecision. What was going to happen this year? The pieces are there, except for the quarterback. They have him. They, I believe, Doc believes that he'll work out, or he would not be here. So it'll be interesting how they, things fall together. Because sometimes, I don't think he'll let the word complacent. You know, they had eight wins last year, three few points away from eleven. A lot of play, you know, a lot of players back, and you think, okay, Doc, as you mentioned, potential, no, it's performance, and performance is what counts. We we don't win on potential, we win on performance. So, how important? That's what he's going to be striving for come Friday when they hit the turf. How important is that? The continuity is there. The terminology is it more important that the terminology is there than the scheming? Because schemes always change. Right. So, is that the bigger issue? Making yeah. sure that. He's speaking the Marshall language, not Marshall speaking his language. Right. Well, the defensive side, it was, you know, Chuck left, but that guy, well, he knows it. And then Tim came in, and we talked. The terminology is similar. You know, his style is a little different things, but when he says X, says Y, whatever, it's not like, what's he talking about? It's it, it's going to resonate when he tells Tyree Brady what to do. So they made their, so when they go on the field Friday and start building, they're very comfortable. They're not running around like, where do I go? What do I do? And stuff like that. I think. 
it'll be fine. I'm very much looking forward to seeing how this guy's offense produces because we know what he's done in the past, but that's past. Doc will tell you it's what he's going to do come uh, September 1st forward is all that matters. Okay, i got a couple more before yeah. we hit the break. Uh, first of all, the question was asked, is Nate Devers ready to go? And here's Doc's response. Yeah, as far as I know, he's back. He's practicing. He's been working out every day with the team, so we'll see where that goes. Okay. That's Including, you've got – Six, six guys with starting experience back uh, along that uh, yeah. offensive front. Which Including him, yes, six. All five of those guys that started uh, the last four to five games are basically all year, you know, led by Levi Brown, of course, at center. And, you know, Dowry's been a two, three year starter. Uh, Millette, and then the three freshmen went in and all played multiple games a year ago. Uh, Tariq Adams, I think, started, what, uh, 12 games. And uh, Ulmer, after the NC State games, he started, he had a lot of starts as well as Millette did. So. Those guys are, you know, anytime you, know, you get those guys an opportunity to get a year stronger and, and a year better, it's going to help them. And you've seen the, ma- the maturity, at, you know, at that. And then we got some good young kids. You know, Alex Locklear has as good a summer as he's had, which he's uh, that's going to help us with some uh, in, in there too. So we're excited about him and, and some, some of the younger players. And we'll leave it with this one before we hit the break. Uh, also, the question was asked, um, you know, what kind of growth do you have there with Greg Atkins? And this is Mr. Holiday's reply to that. Well, I mean, you know, Greg, Greg's an excellent coach. He's, come, he's got great experience, and he comes. He's coached a lot of uh, you know tremendous offensive lines, and yeah, you know, I think just the, just the uh, you know just watching those guys go to work every day. You know, Greg gets to know them a little better. They get to know Greg a little better, and uh, but you can see, you know, the great thing now is we're able to get around these kids a couple times a week during the summer, which it, which helps you know with the you know especially the young kids coming in. You know, those young freshmen coming in. You know, we've had the opportunity to get around those guys about six weeks now, so. You know, it gives those guys. You know, you don't ever. You hope those young. Uh, you hope those young uh, offensive linemen don't have to play. But uh, for example, the Dalton kid was here all summer. He's a good-looking prospect. That, and with the new rule, you know, you got to try to. You know, we've had a lot of conversations as a staff of, you know, those guys can actually play four games now. So how do you, you know, how do you prepare to, you know, at some point uh, get those guys ready if they're not if their numbers call, especially you know as you get towards the end of the year on special teams, for example, a Knox. Last year could have gone in and maybe helped us on special teams, and not would have been tremendous for Isaiah Green last year to go in and play two or three games. You know, if he got in that position to see what he could do and not lose a year of eligibility. So that rule changes some things, but as a staff, you got to figure out how to get the young enough reps. So if you get to a point where you got to play them, that they're prepared to go play, because you never want to put a kid in a game and, and jeopardize winning or losing that game because he doesn't know what's going on. Okay, we are going to come back. I'll have some more from Doc Holiday. We're at the Union Pub and Grill today. You want to come hang out with us because all day, all night, dollar fifty bottles and two dollar call shots. Union Pub and Grill in downtown Huntington. More on the way. It's the drive. ESPN ninety four point one FM and AM nine thirty. Now back to the drive with Paul Swan on ESPN ninety four point one FM and AM nine thirty. We're at eleven twenty five Fourth Avenue in Huntington for today's edition. The Union Pub and Grill Monday special dollar fifty bottles and two dollar call shots. Best service in town. All you have to do is walk through the doors and hang out with us here at the Union Pub and Grill. Paul Swan, Dave Walsh with you. Our Monday hangout here as we're getting you set for football season. And we can talk more about the team because we've got Doc Holliday, his State of the Union address, as I like I don't know, if a State of the Union address, it was like high school reunion time because you got to see some people I haven't seen in a while. It was all fun, ready to go. You you know it's serious. Oh, by the way, Dave, you want to talk in the microphone? You're just talking I, to me. I, I know. You're just we're, hanging we're out talking to me. I'm like, we're what are so you doing? Funny. You're talking. It's like reunion time, which means one thing. It's time. The only time we all gather together is when football, you know, starts. And today was the day. I apologize for visiting it. I will make up for it. But it, you know, seeing the guys, it's like, let's go. Fire away the questions, Paul. So one of the things that you can talk about with Marshall football this season is the depth. It should be there. They've got a lot of returners coming back. They've got several guys coming back. And so there's a lot expected out of this team with that depth, that experience. A year makes these teams a lot better when you have depth like that. But you heard Doc mention earlier about the practice situation. You're just not going to give him as many opportunities to practice. So the question was asked of Doc, hey, you know, are you getting everything you need? You know, that depth, you've got that depth, but are you getting what you need with that depth? Because, after all, you're not going to be able to practice as much or as often as you've used to. So this is what Doc said about that. 
you know, we've talked a lot about that, and this is a we get we got we're the deepest that we've ever been since I've been here. You know, we got our total of 85 uh, scholarships are all full. You know, we've got we had 107 kids here this summer. You know, they've also increased your numbers from 105 to 110. So we have actually 110 bodies out there that where we actually will have a full one, two, and three units. So, you know, for that first five days of that acclimation period, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna actually work three teams. You know, have a first, second, and a full third team for the first at least four days, and see if we can find some young kids that can help us, and then we'll we'll start to enter, uh, you know, start to work those guys in with with possibly twos and twos become ones and that type of thing as we move forward. So if you are a two, you're trying to become a one. If you're trying to get to the twos, you've got to work a little harder, and and then get to the point where you're a four, you're going to get to a three. All yeah. Right. Competition makes everybody better, doesn't it? And you're four, you got to work to a three, but at the same time, you'll think well, four, you know, everybody's watching, and as we've mentioned so many times, one little snap, you could go four to three in a hurry and three to two. So you got to be ready. Last year, some guys went down. Remember the offensive line was like every game was going like, well, we did this, this, and this. End of the year, they're like all freshmen and sophomores, but they didn't play like it. So They did not play like it, so moving up did not hurt. They were schooled and were able to perform. Repetition means a lot more now. If right. you're not getting reps, you're not getting better. So they've got limited reps. They've got more depth. So right. they've got guys who they're going to have to look at. You can't just sit someone on the sideline and hope he gets better right. through osmosis. <laughs> they're going to have to get out there. So when you're out there on the field, you've got to make every rep count. And that right. was the question that was asked to Doc, and this is his response to that. Mm, it does. You know, I don't think there's any question it does because, you know, you had, you had four to five extra practices a year ago, plus you had those extra days in between. You know, I mean, last year we don't think we practiced three days after that first group, but we didn't have a day off. You had more days off a year ago too. So, you know, the structure has changed, but the, I think the, you know, it's everybody's got the same, everybody comes at the same time. Now, if you look around the country, everybody's reporting, you know, on Thursday. So we're all in the same boat as far as that's concerned. So we just have to continue to, Make sure we take advantage of uh, you know every every opportunity we get as far as practice is concerned. Do a great job with our walkthroughs and preparation leading up to every practice. How about your schedule, Doc? You guys jump right in on the road. We do, we do. I say anytime you go on the road, it's hard, you know. But there's no question we're going to go on and have a great challenge with, you know, Miami's. They're, they're a little bit like we are. They got them all back. You know, quarterback's back and had some injuries a little bit of a year ago with the quarterback, but he's back and. Uh, they're picked, you know, I think second in their league on their side. So, you know, people got a lot of respect for what they do have coming back. But uh, it'd be a great challenge for, for us uh, on the road that first game. But we've got a lot of guys back too. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to make sure that we're ready. You know, if you look around, uh, you know, not only that, you got you go on the road and play Miami, but you, you also get the chance to go on the road and play South Carolina. I think it's picked second in the East in the SEC. And NC State's picked in the top three in their league on their side. So those are both challenging games. But what people, Feel realize a little bit is, is is what how far our conference has come. We had ten teams qualify for bowls, and nine of them went to bowls. So, you know, you're gonna line up every every week, not only out of conference but in our conference, and and uh, you better go play, or you're gonna get beat. You know, there's the, from top to bottom. Our conference is the best it's been since since I've been in, in the league, and uh, it's. Uh, but you know, to go and talking to the other coaches around the league, everybody feels the same way. You know, I know middle middle opens up, and they've got Vandy and a couple other SEC schools early on, so. We all have the same challenges. We just have to make sure we're ready to play every week. John Collins talking about the depth and then, of course, the schedule going on the road, and that leads me to my next thought here. It's important for Marshall to get off to a quick start because Miami is going to be an important game, and then you come back home, you get Eastern Kentucky. That should be a winnable game, right. and then you've got to go right at it at South Carolina. You've got NC State coming, and then on the road at Western Kentucky, and then you bring Middle in. Really, the first six games, four or five of them are going to be super tough. And then I don't know what Eastern Kentucky is going to bring because you never know. This is going to be a big deal for them, so they're going to really play their herd right. tough. That's the old FBS school, so you know they want to come in and make, some, make a name for themselves. But it seems like the schedule's almost reversed of a year ago. They get, things went well early and then some things down the road. But this year, after the first two, you've got four weeks of pretty tough football. And one of those, you've got a short week. I think the, Miami, the Middle Tennessee game is on a Friday, so it's you know they, the old change the schedule story. We'll hear that week, but uh, so they're gonna you know if they get through the early part, do well. Who knows? Who knows? But Miami, that's the one that's that's going to be the the bar setter right there. I mean, a big high or uh oh, 
and you know how I feel about that one. I we'll discuss you. that later. We'll discuss it later. <laughs> now let's get into some detail things that Doc talked about. He was asked about the, the defensive end spot, so uh, I'll let Doc explain uh, how he feels about uh, how the defensive end spot's coming in his own time. Yeah, Hodge and Cumberland are two tremendous-looking young prospects who are anxious to see with pads on. But they've had great off seasons. They both bring a lot of energy to practice or to, to the workouts, and very talented guys. So you you add those two guys to the mix. You know, Ty Tyler. Hopefully, if Cumberlander and, and Hodge can be what we think they are, then that'll give us a chance to play Ty inside a little more, which gives us a little bit more depth inside with Ty, Malik, you know, B and Hames and. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. But Couch is just a good football player. You know, Couch is a guy that played an awful lot for us a year ago. He's an excellent, excellent football player. So we feel like, you know, we feel like we've gotten a lot of depth up front. We feel, we feel good about our linebacker depth. We've got to come up with another corner. You know, it's going to be early on in camp that, you know, we, we talk about, you know, before there's also always been a lot of young players that you're trying. You know, we're not looking for a lot of young players to come up and give us immediate help at this point. However, we are looking for a young corner to come in and plug into that nickel spot or a wide corner spot if we can rotate somebody else. And we like where we are at safety. Uh, linebackers are, are solid at this point. And then we got any, probably need one more receiver that can that can step up out of a couple of those young guys to step up and give us a little bit of depth there. But overall, we're not looking you know, for a lot of young guys to come in and play immediately. We would like for some young guys to come in and provide some depth. And that's going to be the theme, I think, for the next few weeks, depth. Marshall right. has depth now. And you look at the defensive end spot, you have depth. You look at the wide receiver spot, you have depth. Big time depth there. And I don't think people realize that that the wide receiver position, it's probably the best position on this squad right now. And this is just not Tyrese. It's not, hey, he's on the field and there's right. some guys with him here. There's a lot of names. There are a lot of names on the wide receiver side, and here's Doc talking about that depth. I think teams are going to sleep on the herd on the wide receiver position, and if they do, they're going to be they're going to be in big trouble. But here's Doc talking about the depth on wide receiver position. Well, no, and Marcel Williams, was, as you mentioned, we think he's an excellent player. You know, provides great leadership. Willie's come a long ways. I like Obi a lot. You know, Obi's another guy that's had a tremendous off season. And, those four guys have all played a lot of football for us, and and then what you got to try to do now is just try to find one or two more that you can throw in the mix there, at, uh, you know, somewhere along the line. And you know, we've had Sheldon Evans is a good young back that we've got that's had a great summer that we haven't seen a whole lot of, but you know, he's you know, you got you got Keon, you got uh, you know, of course Tyler, and you got Anthony Anderson had a great spring, you got Knox, you know, so you got some depth there too. So you got some good young players that we we'll want to you know see what they can do, where they can plug in. I think. And because of the young players that we have that are good players, our special teams have got to continue to get better. And, you know, we've, we've played, you know, it's part of the reason we've had success is the way we played special teams around here. And that's got, we've got some good young players that we think can, can really help us in that area. Special teams, that's always been a Doc Holiday hallmark. It's maybe the defense or the offense that gets a lot of the accolades, but we have, over the years, known Doc Holliday to judge teams yeah. based on special teams. The old phase three, you know, offense, defense, special teams. And remember last year, Miami game, people not even settled in their seats yet, opening kickoff, taking it back, took another one back later. So they do their work. It's just not run down whatever, you know, they, they, they can make things happen when they receive and when they have to give it up. They have a, some great work last year by Bedbeck, and I'm sure the next group, but it's 11 guys working together where you kick it to the corner, kick it deep, whatever. They go after it, and if you don't produce, they'll put somebody else in there. I mean, the number's there. It's like you're number one, you got to work to stay number one because number two's pushing. Speaking of special teams, Doc was asked a little bit more about that unit, and here is Doc explaining what he's got on special teams and talking about that part of his squad. Well, they, those guys have all. I tell you what, and we did, we did the same thing with Vedvik and those guys in the past. They leave for most of the month in July and go work at kicking camps, you know, with with professional athletes and all those guys. They travel to, on their own all over the country and they work and it's helped them. I know uh, Justin went up and worked out with Vedvik up up at the uh, with the Titans or wherever he is up there, and uh, you know, Vedvik's done a tremendous job. I mean, he's he's really doing a nice job punting and kicking and. Uh, but uh, I like those two. I like both uh, Lefevre and I like uh, McDonough's come a long ways. I like I like where we are with Justin. So uh, I, I think we'll be fine there. Finally, uh, Doc talked a little bit about walk-ons at Marshall. Walk-ons have been a big part of this team as of late. It's amazing how many quality players that Doc has been able to find, identify, bring on, or develop from the walk-on ranks. Exactly. Unbelievable. Sometimes, you know, they call them a work in progress, but 
they get the work. Whoops, they get the work done because uh, I think one of the guys last year ends up being a captain on defense was a walk-on. So uh, you, you, you give me a chance and I'll deliver. And that's what they've done. So uh, yeah, this is just uh, some wrap-up stuff there. But the doc was updating everyone on the walk-on status. So because scholarships, you got your all your scholarships. So how is he divvying them up? How many walk-ons are getting uh, a little help? Because walk-ons are playing for the hope of maybe getting a scholarship, but they're playing because well they think it's a better situation yeah. for them, or they just want to play. Right. They don't still want to go from away from the game just yet. Right. So here's Doc updating everybody on the walk-on status with scholarships. Yeah, we put uh, uh, Nazi Johnson. Who, so it's amazing with the two safeties. That we had. And, the, and the, what's happened, not just since I've been here, but the walk-ons here have been tremendous. I mean, you look at Malik Gant was a walk-on, and Nazi Johnson was a walk-on, and you know, both those guys are, are both you know as good at two safeties as probably is in our league. And uh, but uh, put Nazi on, uh, Kane Madden we put on it was another walk on that we put on offensive lineman, and it's going to be a backup for us. So am I missed anybody? Tyler uh, Brown. Tyler Brown did go on. Yes, Tyler Brown did go uh, on. Is Joey Maddox on scholarship? Uh, he, he. It just depends on where we are number wise. Okay. Yes, he is right now. Mm-hmm. Those those walk ons you can take them on and, put, and take them off. And just uh, based on where your numbers are, you can help them and that type of thing, which we try to help as many. I mean, and like I say, you, you go back and look at some of the walk ons from Bazzi to Talaferro to Van Horn to Chase Hancock is another example of guys that have really developed as, as walk ons here. And finally, the question was asked hey, what about all this walk on success you do have? And here's Doc following up on that. To be able to sit and tell you we did such a great job recruiting Malik Gant, but he's here because of the exchange deal we have with the D.C. area. You know, those kids in D.C. can come here as in-state students. You know, so you get a lot of those kids that come here, you know, as in-state students, and uh, and that's that's huge. We don't get a lot of them, but there's the reason that we got Malik. And you know, Nazi was just a guy that we'd you know, we a lot of these walk-ons we were recruiting, and and a lot of these guys just they're just undeveloped kids. And I think the one thing we have done here is done a good job developing players. You know, through our weight program and all that, and I think that the, the you know, Chase Hancocks and Van Horns and Bazzies and Talaferros and Nazis and Maliks are examples examples of that. So there you have it. You now have heard everything that we heard today at Doc Holliday's presser. The start of football season has begun. Summer has ended. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's an entire month ago, right? And summer has ended. But the big thing out of this was. Not as much indecision or unknown as it was this time last year. He's got the pieces, but he knows he's still got a plug here and there, how the young guy's going to do. But I think if you got away from the coach peak and he goes into his office, he feels a lot better now than he did this time last year. Do you think he's even sweating the fact that I don't have my quarterback? I've got new guys. I don't have my veteran quarterback here. And I've got some new guys on my coaching staff. I, you don't hear him sweating at all. No. He's, he's like, you know, we just go on. Yeah. It, the system is the system, I think. Yeah, you got the system, and they work it. Uh, you know, the defensive coordinator just moved up. The offensive guy came in from the outside, but very high marks. So, uh, you know, everybody else has pretty much been here for a while. And that says a lot for itself when you have, you know, coaching continuity as opposed to every year you go like, well, there's three new guys, another guy, new guys, new guys. You have to learn them all over. So having consistency on the coaching staff doesn't hurt at all either. We're here at the Union Pub and Grill, 1125 4th Avenue in Huntington. Always a Monday special. What is the Monday special? You're like sign languaging that to me, yeah, Dave. You're, 150. you're giving me two and one. Th- I don't know how your 150 looks in, in sign language there, but dollar fifty bottles and two dollar call shots. Thankfully, we're not video streaming I know. our Monday edition here. Hey, what is wrong with him? <laughs> I, might, I might for one week. I might film you one week. More on the way. We'll wrap it up when we continue. We are here at the Union Pub and Grill. It's The Drive on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. You're listening to The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. One final time today from the Union Pub and Grill. This is The Drive on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. And don't forget, if you ever miss any part of the show and you want to go back and catch it, All you have to do is find us on Apple Podcasts or on Stitcher Radio. We're on TuneIn. Wherever you get your podcasts, you can find The Drive with Paul Swan online also at our website, wrvc.com. A lot of places to be found. And I remember one year you got a highly rated one. I went and listened to it. I worked the knobs, found it, and it was... uh, Did you find a podcast? Yes. 
it takes a while to get there, but, I mean, you know, it was a marathon, not a sprint. You improved. <laughs> I mean, last year you had the Fisher-Price cell phone. Now you've got a, a full-fledged, what do you got there? It's, uh, no, you've hidden it's, it. No, it's in the car. It's in I the mean, car. I didn't even bring it in. I mean, I don't want to disrupt. That's what the sign said in the, off, the studio last year. I turned and went, oh, sorry. But, I mean, some great stuff with, uh, I mean, the herd's ready to roll, and then throw something out here real quick. I know the Bengals fan you are, but I was up north over the, for a few days, grandson's birthday, daughter's birthday. Brown's training camp starts, and the first day headline was Brown's fans having a ball, to which I said, how long will that last? Coming back, we saw the Goodyear blimp flying around Akron there because they got the golf tournament in town. And on I-77, when you get to Canton, that little thing called the Hall of Fame, a lot of pictures of a former Marshall guy there. I've heard of him. Randy Moss. His moment to shine is Saturday night. He goes into the Hall of Fame. A Marshall member of the football team in the NFL Hall of Fame. Doesn't get any better than that. So pretty good accomplishment there. And and that should inspire the guys that are now going, well, if he did it, you never know. So I I don't have much to say on this. This is why I haven't said anything until now. But there's rumor. There's rumor of a Class A Midwest League baseball team coming to Huntington. I read that on your – I figured you have sources. My, my source is Frank Gardenia, who has sources. So basically, okay. uh, I asked Frank, well, give me some more information on that. You're throwing that out on Facebook yeah. like that's a thing. What's going on? And he said, you know as much as I do, buddy. That's that's all uh, I know. But, you know. We've talked about it. I'd love to see how, but it won't happen with the hockey. But the baseball, we desperately need it. If they get the ballpark, we need, minor league system, Marshall you know, in the summertime, another form of entertainment that, all the other cities in the state have but us. I would love to see it happen. And I read your comments. I said, well, Paul, has got some people out there. He Midwest, here we come. I thought it might be the Appy League, but I don't matter what league it is. Get somebody here. Well, I don't think it's ever going to be the um, the uh, South Atlantic League. That would not happen because it would be too close too between close. Charleston. Yeah. Even though it would be interesting to have Huntington right in between Lexington and West Virginia's affiliate, you know, the power. Right. The power. And – that would be nice. Because yeah, when I grew up in Virginia, you had Norfolk and Richmond. Right. You know, the AAA days. But now Richmond moved on. Norfolk is still AAA. But they were less than 100 miles apart. But I think the 50 miles, would. there's probably some loss and you can't do it. I think you can get away with it. You can do it. Yeah. There's more than 50 miles. Yeah. And a nice ballpark and some things set up. You're going to tell them no? That's the thing, though. Where's the ballpark? <laughs> right. So that means if somebody, if this is it's true. On the board. <laughs> if this is true, there's a ballpark. Because uh, I've heard rumor that yeah. there are pictures of it. Somebody Is has seen the photo. Somewhere? Yeah, some, <laughs> it's it's probably on, on Marshall University athletic director Mike Hamrick's smartphone. And the mayor's smartphone. And the mayor's smartphone. Mm. I don't know. This is all rumors. And are they what speculation? Like sworn to secrecy. It does not get out at the risk of something bad happening. I don't think they're going to announce anything until they got something. No. But it would be great to have minor league baseball come back to Huntington. It would definitely be. I think be, they would support it. I really do. Yeah. Be, the Tri-State would get behind baseball. What else do you do in the summertime? Well, right now you drive to Charleston if you want to see it or Cincinnati, so it would be a nice right. option here. And if you're a Pirates fan, it's great to go to Charleston because right. of the power. I mean, it's fun. You go to a power game, it's fun. Right. You, these guys are going to be maybe future major leaguers, so you're going to get to see that. guys we watch there that if down the road, who knows? And if, like, they get in a good farm system, you know, you, you're going to see some really good talent on the way up. They develop instead of having development and have the fire sale and right. send them somewhere else. In the same time, you get Marshall baseball, a better baseball situation. It's just going to be right. better That's all around for I mean, I got here in 70, and, and it's amazing to think they played road games since I've been here in 1970 forever. Poor Jack Cook, the job he did, he never played a home game. There was a homes park, but he never played a true home game. No, you really have a good situation with the facility in Charleston, but it's not your home park. No, you just travel to Beckley to play a home game. You're a, t- you're a travel team. Right. And so when I hear fans criticize uh, the job sometimes, step back. Think about it. Please step back until you get a situation where you have given the coach everything he needs to succeed. I think what – the job is being done right now has been pretty good. Yeah, Coach Wagner, you got to give him credit because, I mean, you know, no field, you think, is he going to do something to leave? But you know what? He's still here. He knows what he's in for, but he finds a way to get it done. Yeah, I would never criticize uh, Wags for anything he does uh, because he's got a situation that he's got to deal with uh, every day. I don't have a facility. Yeah. He can do the very best he can do, right. but he still – 
a disadvantage because he doesn't have a facility. Yeah, the old sign, start the bus, is like home and away. That's but you know what? He's getting some kids drafted. And that's you not watch a, every night on the end there's Straley and some other guys, so that's not a bad deal. Work somehow. That's not a bad deal. That's going to do it for this edition. We appreciate everyone here taking care of us. Thank you, sir. At the Union Pub and Grill, 1125 Fourth Avenue in Huntington. $1.50 bottles, $2 call shot. Kitchen's open as well. If you're hungry, stop on by. The kitchen is open. That's going to do it for this edition for Gabriel Sellers back in the studio. Dave Walsh hanging out with you because, well, he just missed me so much. I'm Paul Swan. This has been The Drive on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Good night, everyone. WRBC Huntington, W227BS Huntington, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Huntington Sports Station.